Welcome to Co-op Guild. This is Steve. I'm here with a review for Orange Shell Overcome. Note, we were not provided any compensation for this review. Orange Shell Overcome is a one to five player game where players will be working together as part of the resistance during the Dutch occupation in World War II. Players will be acting as characters in the game inspired by real people during this event. If players can complete the scenario objectives before someone's alibi runs out or morale drops to zero, or time runs out, they win the game. Let's start off by taking a look at setup and cleanup for Orange Shell Overcome. This is a pretty normal setup and cleanup time compared to most board games out there. Uh, I do have this ranked a little bit lower because the insert of this is just not functional. Honestly, if they had an insert, it would help a ton here. But it's pretty easy to do. The scenarios tell you exactly what pieces you need to grab, tells you where to go. It's a pretty easy experience from that standpoint. The component quality in Orange Shell Overcome is good. No issues here. I find the player boards and the game board itself very sturdy. Uh, the card quality is great. No issues there. This is just straight up a good solid game. Orange Shell Overcome does a good job with helping people learn how to play the game. I say that because the player boards has a lot of information right there in front of you. It has a round structure printed on there so you know exactly what's coming up. And the actions you can take during your turn is very clear and easy to do. Not to mention the cards themselves have a lot of iconography that's used in a lot of smart ways. So once you get used to the icons, and there's not a lot of them, there's a reference sheet to help you with those icons. But once you get a hold of them, it plays very easy from that standpoint. So a big plus here. I think they did a great, good job on learnability. The standout feature for Orange Shell Overcome is definitely their engagement. It is extremely high here because there's very little downtime in the game. Players will be taking their turns one at a time going around the table, but the cool thing about this is there are generic actions that anyone can take at any time. That facilitates a lot of discussion, a lot of cooperation. It feels like, independent on whose turn it actually is, it feels like it's everyone's turn all the time. That's because you need to figure out who's going to take those actions and when they're going to take them. So everyone at the table is engaged in those discussions. After all the players take their actions, there is an enemy AI turn, which they will be moving around the board and, and through patrols. But that is actually a very quick step, not to mention the danger step with adjusting the values of different locations. And then it's immediately back to player turns again. So the percentage of player engagement and time in this game is extremely high. When I'm playing Orange Shell Overcome, I am very engrossed in the decision space. There's a lot of things to consider in this game be it the actions you're going to take, because each character has special actions, uh, but there's also the buildings themselves. There's tons of different buildings in the game, and some of them will just give you basic resources. A lot of them will be able to turn those resources in for different effects. So trying to figure out, ooh, do I go get that ticket so I can teleport people um, with using the train from one spot to another, or do I get papers so I can pass those uh, crossroads, which can be very dangerous affairs. Or do I need to really increase morale so we get more of those action points? There's a lot of fun decisions there, not to mention the scenarios themselves add unique actions and different goals to do, achieve. And they do have quite a variety there. Getting back to the crossroads, that is a key element of this game that is very fun because there are, of course, soldiers and officers running around the board. Now, you can choose to cross paths with these uh, enemies, but then you need to draw a card for a narrative event. These narrative events, you can have a choice on what you want to do. So some of them might be like, oh, uh, you do you decide to duck into the corner or do you decide to calmly walk by them? Just a basic example here. And based on the decision, what level of enemy you're walking by, you'll have a different consequence for that. Now, of course, you want to avoid these as much as possible, but this might add to that risk versus reward. Like, oh, if I get there quicker, I have more actions to do what I need to. Let's make that risk now. And that adds to the decision space in a fun way. I found the variety in this game to be quite good. The characters you play in this game are all very different in how they play. They have different focus. Some of them are really good at managing the safety so that there's a lot more safe locations around the board. Others move very fast because they have access to a bicycle, for example. Or maybe they are pretending to be pregnant and now they can stash goods in their suit that makes them look pregnant and maybe walk by the guards without being stopped. So there's a lot of fun interactions and seeing how the different characters work together is a fun element of the game. The scenarios themselves are very different. There are five of them in the box and some of the scenarios have built-in variety within them which adds even more like which of these goals within this 
scenario do we want to achieve? I really enjoyed that aspect. They did an excellent job of variety here. And we finally round out the list with cooperation. I found cooperation to be quite good in this game. The core of it is, of course, managing those resources. Let's see. Oh, I need, I can meet you at this location, and then I can pass you those resources you need to achieve the goal. But if we also stay in that spot, if there's more people there, that's going to drop the safety even more because now people are more suspicious of us being the area. So there's a lot of, a lot of working together on that front. Some characters are more cooperative than others in the fact that they can directly affect other people. For example, oh, I have a card I can play to immediately improve your alibi, for example, or I can pass you these resources from a distance, or I can even give you those new newspapers I mentioned earlier in this list. But um, all in all, I thought the cooperation was very good in this one. So who would like this game? Definitely people who like pick up and deliver games. This game focuses on how can you get these resources from point A to point B in the most efficient manner. If you like that type of puzzle, definitely check this one out. In addition, if you like this part of history uh, with the Dutch occupation side, this is a very respectful approach to that theme. The designer actually took time to reach out to the families and get permissions to use their likeness in the game, which is very awesome. I like that touch of history and having the backstories on the cards. Very, very nice. And on to my final thoughts for Orange Shell Overcome. I have a lot of fun with this game. This game is great. I really enjoy the variety of characters. I find them very fun, interesting to play. I, I know there's only three actions for each of them, but they are so different how you can approach the game with them. The scenarios are great. I was worried that they won't provide a lot of replayability because once you beat them, wouldn't you come back to it? Would it feel different enough? Honestly, it does. Some of them are more than others. And just like I mentioned in the review, uh, like for the last scenario, for example, you've got multiple tasks you can pick from. You pick one to two tasks to do, and it's multiple, multiple steps to do it. So between like the internal variety within the scenarios, uh, the different halt cards have different effects, the events that you'll see in the game that have variety there, there's just a lot of different ele little elements of variety that makes the game feel different each time, despite playing the same scenario. So I haven't had any issues on that front. I make it no secret I'm a big fan of stealth games, and while this isn't necessarily stealth where you're sneaking around, you're kind of still doing that because you're part of the resistance group, so you try to avoid the different checkpoints and try to get around the guards. And I enjoy that aspect of it. That gives me that sense of, of that stealth, that feeling, that resistance, and I really feel like this theme comes out in the game and it's done in a very respectful manner. When I'm playing this game, I find I lose track of time very easily because there's so many different options. Like, do I trigger these different buildings? How do I play my cards most efficiently? And I really appreciate that. One thing I really like about this game it are the difficulty levers. I'm able to adjust the game play experience to exactly what I want, but when an easier experience or harder challenge, I've got those options. Now, the expansion, which is currently on Kickstarter as a recording of this review, is adding more modules to the game, which I am very excited for. So that adds even more levers I can pull to make the game experience exactly what I want. Orange Shell Overcome provides a unique gameplay experience I don't have on my shelf. So this one is definitely staying in my collection. Hope you found this review useful. Thanks for watching and see you next time at the Guild. Bye-bye.